Shalom, Kohola Imla, Yaha Bashim, Yaha Shai Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who well for teaching me the truth. Citations to the hopeful elect. To you brothers out there across the globe, pushing this truth with all righteousness and sincerity. And to you, some sisters, who hearken as well diligently, peace, love, and blessings. All right. Yahweh's name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, whose name is He is or He exists. Bahashim is in the name. Yahweh has the name of the Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whose name is He, deliverer, He, salvation. Bahashim Rakak Badash means in the name Holy Spirit. Okay. And um, I'm going to just do this video real quick. You know, just um, going into this popular misconception about, you know, love and how love is this feel good emotion and you know love love is you know tied to uh you know how you um which i can't say it is tied to how you feel all right but what i really want to get into how is how love is more of an action all right and and that action of love is tied to in this truth and really it should be in general man all right love is is tied to obligation and commitment okay and sincerity and devotion all, right, all, all, all of those things being fruits of the spirit, okay. When you, when you know the scriptures, all right, and those principles of love according to the scriptures, you're supposed to carry those about your everyday life. Like the love you have for the heavenly Father, is the same love you're supposed to have for the Son. Is the same love you're supposed to have for yourself. Is the same love you're supposed to have for a brother, your wife, your children, okay. So that 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 begs the question. That begs the question. You know, what is love according to the scriptures? All right. So I just want to you know go into that real quick through the spirit and break this popular misconception about you know, um um, you know, love and um um limerence, okay, or or romanticism and things of that nature. Okay, the 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 worldly fleshly you know butterflies in your stomach, man. This is totally different from the love of the Most High, man. All right, the love of this truth. Okay, so I'm going to um, get this real quick in the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Whosoever believeth that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, or that Yahweh Shai is the Hamashiach, which means anointed, is born of the Most High, and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also, that is begotten of him. All right, so anybody who loves Yahweh Shai and believes in Yahweh Shai, all right, and believes that he's the son of the Most High, all right, the, the Lord loves them right back, man. Okay, and Yahweh Shah loves the ones that, that believe on him, and that's why he gathers them together, man. All right. It says, verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of the Most High when we love the Most High and keep his commandments. Okay, so that, that's, that's love right there, when we keep the commandments. All right, verse 3, and it solidifies the point. It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Okay, so let's go into that word love real quick. All right, and this is in the New Testament. It's, it's Greek. All right, so love is agape. All right, or agape, however you pronounce that. All right, this is G26. It says affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, brotherly love, love feasts. It says love, charity, down here in the Strongs. It says love, charity, dear, charitably, feasts of charity. Okay, and you know, how do brothers express you know, love in its truth, man. Okay, when we when we go out to camp together, when we fellowship, all right, when when we can lay down our lives for each other, man. All right, because the scriptures talk about that. All right, greater have no love than this. Let me go ahead and get that real quick. All right, greater have no no love than this. I know it's in the book of John, Saint John. Oops. You have John 15 and 12. It says, this is my commandment. Yahweh Shah speaking. This is red lettering. It says, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Okay. Verse 13. And that's, that's plain. That's simple. That's straight to the point. All right. The scriptures say, the scriptures command of us. Okay. The scriptures demand of us. Excuse me. The scriptures demand of us to love one another. As Yahweh Shah has loved us, because was Yahweh Shah, uh, did Yahweh Shah not love the disciples when, when they was following after him? All right, observing his works when he had to rebuke them. Okay, it, rebuke is a form of love, man. Okay, and I'll, I'll get that in a second, but rebuke is a form of love, man. Okay, when you call a brother out on his bullshit, all right, you know, hey, I keep going off. 
Are you, you know, you got to tighten up. You need some things you need to work on. All right. And, and also, you know, for yourself, because if you would check a brother, you're supposed to be checking yourself, too. And that's that's self-love, man. All right. Self-love. That's why the scriptures say love thy neighbor as thyself. OK, that's the second commandment. And the first one is, is what, you know, love the most high with all mind, body and spirit. All right. It says. John 15 and 13, it says greater love have no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends, okay? And that's what we do when we go out on the highways and the hedges, you know, with each other, man. Okay, and and, and, and granted, not every brother's going to get along in the spirit, all right? It, it's That shit just happens, man. All right, we still under curses, but what? You still got to have some type of, you know, love for a brother, man, okay? You ain't got to like the man. Just like just like what? You know, maybe you got to show that you may not like her. Maybe, maybe she, she, she changed over time, you know, uh, physically, all right, maybe her, her personality changed a little bit, but as long as she's not, you know, bringing ultimate hell on you, okay, and, and vexing you every single day, or whatever the case, man, look, man, it's, look, that, that love is tied to obligation, if she didn't cheat on you, if she ain't step out on you, if she's not being a damn demon, or whatever, maybe she's being, maybe she's just being annoying, or whatever the case, but if she's not trying to, you know, if she's not deterring you from doing this work, man, you deal with her, okay, that's the same thing with brothers, man. If you want to camp, you know, you may not like brothers or brothers may not like you. Whatever the case is, you deal with them. OK, because what? At the end of the day, we're going to get we're going to get the kingdom regardless, man. And everything going to be straight in the kingdom. All right. But what the love, the love of the scriptures is tied to obligation and commitment, despite what the world thinks or says. All right. Verse 14, it says, "Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. All right, so there you go, man. All right, Yahweh commanded us to love one another, man. All right, and that's this point blank and simple. Okay, now, um, you know, made a point saying that uh, that rebuking a brother is love in itself. And that's and that's actually a part of the law. Okay, the scriptures say, "Suffer not sin upon thy neighbor." Let me see if I can find that too. But let me get this first. Okay, and it makes sense too. It makes sense if you see a brother going off, or if a brother see you going off, you know, doing things that that's you know that can be detrimental to to you know your health, your life, so to speak. You want to you want to give him warning, you know. Hey, I you know I see that I see that you've been um I don't know I I see I see that you know you you've been making a lot less videos, man. You know you was on fire at one point in time, but I you know I noticed the last you know, two, three months that, you know, you, you went from doing five videos a week to, to one or two, you know, I also noticed that, you know, you, you, um, you, uh, you, you don't want to, you don't want to bring out precepts that can't too much anymore, things of that nature, you know, or, oh, or, oh, hey, I, you know, I noticed that, uh, you know, you, you've been, um, what is it, man? You know, you've been eating too much, you know, you've been sleeping too much, you know, in excess or, or what have you been drinking too much, whatever it is, man, he may not be, you know, totally going off, going off. All right. But it, but it could be what, but you just want to give a brother one. You want to let a brother know that you're paying attention and what do you want to, you want to give him some type of admonishment or advice. Okay. So that way he, you know, the brother stays on his P's and Q's. All right. But this is the book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse five. It says open rebuke is better than secret love. Or ah, you you too you you a little too argumentative, and things of that nature, you know. Or ah, you you don't do a very good job at following orders. Is everything all right? All right, you gotta openly rebuke brothers, man. You know, go to go to the brother, of course, first, face to face. You know, let him know what's on your mind respectfully, okay. And then you know you go about your day, and the scriptures talk about that, okay. There's it's a whole procedure behind that, but what? You want to, you want to, you know, correct or admonish your brother if he's going off. All right. That's what, that's what us as, as Israelites, Jake, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. This is what we have to do for each other, man. All right. This is why, you know, the prophets is out in, in what we, um, we, we go out and we rebuke Jake because we love Jake. We love our people. I mean, we, more importantly, we looking for the elect of our people, but we go out and we admonish Jake as a whole. All right. In hopes that the elect wake up. Let me see if I can find it. 
Yep, this is the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. This is in the law, okay? Admonishing a brother or, or sister, you know? It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. All right, and that's plain in itself. You're supposed to, you know, bear no grudges against, you know, your fellow Israelite man, okay? That's going off, man, all right? It says, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Okay, once again, you see your brother going off. Or you see that something in his behavioral patterns have changed. You need to address it. It would be wise to address it. All right. Now, this is not to go. This is not to say go nitpick at him. Okay. And bother his spirit. All right. Because what is men? We, we need to learn. As men, we need to have that type of discipline within ourselves to be like, damn, I'm not doing enough for this. I'm not doing enough for that. But sometimes, sometimes you got, or rather all the time, you got certain brothers that need that, that little extra push, man. You know, brothers that need that little extra push. All right. But you don't want to nitpick and grieve a brother, man, because then what you going, you going to burden him. Then you going to think that he going to think that every time, you know, he get around you, you're going to have some something to fucking say to him, man. And that's not right. OK, so you don't want to nitpick out a brother. But when when a time calls for it, you, you know, using discernment, you want to what it says, thou shalt in, in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and suffer not sin upon him and not suffer sin upon him. OK, so you see a brother about to do something foolish. You need to admonish him. All right, whatever it is, man. OK, verse 18, it says, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Plain. OK, so, you know, if somebody owes you money and they don't pay it back for for a, a long time. Instead of like the, if somebody has wronged you, you know, maybe somebody uh, offended you in some type of way. I right, don't don't hold that shit over their head, man. OK, it, 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 let it go. All right. And me and my me and, you know, my father and I, we used to talk about this a lot. Like it takes a lot of energy to hate somebody. You know, you just sitting in the crib and the scriptures say, don't let just don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Loosely paraphrasing. OK, but what what happens when you when you hate somebody, when you despise somebody a lot, you just sitting in the crib or wherever you at getting mad like, man, man fuck this. Man. You know, you look foolish. All right. And the scriptures talk about, you know, how was some good to be slow to wrath. OK, but going back to the point, this is thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. All right. So there you go, man. OK, going back, going back to uh, uh, love, a hob. All right. You got to have that genuine kindness for a brother, man. Respect all right, the obligation. OK. A brother tell you to do something, you know, do it. A brother makes a request of you. You know what I'm saying? It would be in your best interest to do it, man. OK. Especially if you got a camp head. All right. We, we, we the scriptures told us to be servants one to another. All right. The scriptures say, well, you shall know my um my my uh, my men, my my uh, uh, my prophets by, by the love that they have, you know, one for another. Loosely paraphrasing. I know that's in the New Testament somewhere, but you get the point, man. All right. And what do you, how was I tell Peter? Speaking of, you know, disciples and the prophets. Okay. Um, if he loved me, y'all know what I'm getting. Let me see. Yep, if you love me, keep my commandments. That was a good one, too. Feed my sheep, but that's not the one I wanted. There we go. John 21 and... Let me see. Let me see. John 21 and 15, it says, So when they had dined, Yahweh shall save to Simon Peter. Okay, remember, you know, Peter... Was um was a uh, uh, you know one of the top disciples, man. Okay, Yahweh Shai gave you know the apostle Peter, or uh, uh, his disciple be uh, his, his disciple Peter the keys to the kingdom, man. Okay, meaning mean what Peter Peter would would play a major part in waking Israel back up. Okay, after Yahweh Shai was gone, all right, and and you know uh, generations later on, all right, and that's exactly what happened. 
All right. But let that be a mystery. And that did happen in this time. That did happen. OK. It says so when they had died and it, and it was through, you know, um, a uh, 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 part of it was through a, a man named King Masha. All right. It says so when they had died, Yahweh shall say to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 16, it says, He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto me, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. <laughs> Verse 17, He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was, <laughs> I always love reading this, man, when I come across it. This says, Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Because in what, and, and I said it in, in uh, I think it was my last video. All right. Yahweh Shah was able to perceive, you know, everybody's thoughts, man. So Yahweh Shah knew. Okay. But it says, and he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shah saith unto him, feed my sheep. Okay, so Yahweh Shah, you know, asked him three times and told him three times, you know, uh, do you love me? Feed my sheep. That's how important it is, man. All right, that's how important it is, you know, in in this ministry to, to, to do the work, man. Do the work, man. Just do the work. Keep your head down. Do the work. All right, show brotherly love, man. All right, the scriptures talk about the fruits of the spirit. All right, charity. Okay, not being slothful in business. Distributing to the necessity of state uh, saints. All right. Uh, fellowship. All, right, all of those are being merciful. And that's, 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 oh man. That it's, it's not a lot of, it's not enough for that shown in Israel, man. And it's, it's sad, man. You know, not having, you know, mercy on a brother and things of that nature. Because Jake, Jake is so violent, man. It's, it's coming to a point in time where it's just like, you know, the curses, the curses, yes, the curses are still active. All right, you, you know, we, you still got a lot of Jakes out there that's still hostile one toward another, even even in this truth, even in this ministry, man. And it's, it's sad. It's very unfortunate. All right. But here we are. OK, but what? What you want to do is you want to you want to feed the sheep, man. You want to feed the lambs, man. Just like what Yahweh Shai commanded us do, uh, commanded us to do. Feed the lambs, feed the sheep. OK, so just, you know, do the work, man. Be brotherly, do the work. OK. You know, yes, sir. No, sir. Be respectful. All right. Because in, in what? There's going to be times to where we may suffer, you know, wrongfully. If, a, you know, a brother come down on us real heavy and things of that nature, man. All right. The scriptures talking about, you know, just just bearing it, just bearing it. All right. Because what the, the love for the Lord comes first. All right. It's not about us directly. It's about the Lord. It's about Yahweh Shah. All right. How we treat brothers is how we is how we treat Yahweh Shah, man. You always want to keep that in mind. All right. But that was the point on that. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. I also wanted to get this little article real quick. OK, because I was looking up how uh, love is tied to obligation and things of that nature. So I want to get this on. Uh, it says psychology today. Yeah, I guess it's psychology today dot com or something. All right, but it says true love or outdated obligation. What do you do when passion is replaced by complacency? All right, um, I'm not going to read all of this, of course. So I'll jump to the point. It says crazy and love limerence. All right, I had mentioned this in the beginning of the video. All right, it says those first three to 18 months of romantic love make up a period called limerence. This is that delightful period in which your first thought each morning and last thought at night is of your beloved it is a delightful time in which you see the world through love goggles and every shared experience is somehow made fresh and new as if the pair of you were creating a shared universe in which even the grimmest reality can be perceived as beautiful as a beautiful tragedy that your love can overcome all right now now while there's nothing necessarily wrong with this this limerence feeling okay you always want to keep in mind that you know, uh, uh, women, when they perceive a, you know, when they see a certain type of man, 
All right, they they get that 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 limerence, and and men do it too. Men do it too. You know, we all fall into that state of limerence and the butterflies in the stomach, and you know, I I just don't want to be without this person or what have you. All right. But you want to you want to be you want to be cognizant of it, all right. And this is a, this is another conversation my father and I had. Uh, somebody in love, you can't tell them shit, man. All right, a man can have a woman, and and that bro, she just cheating on him all the time, and he's not gonna snap out of that 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 feeling of limerence for her, all right. That 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 butterflies in the stomach, and that that you know madly and deeply in love, he's not gonna snap out of that until it's, it's until. You know, for whatever reason, whatever snaps him out of it. Okay, you can't tell a motherfucker in love nothing, man. All right. It's and sometimes and sometimes it's, it's lust too. So that's another thing you want to be cognizant of. All right, uh, grim realities. It says because this period has a shelf life. Eventually, the grim realities, money, families, distance, goals, etc., become even more real. And this is where the relationship's future is cast. If you and your partner are tackling an, obs an obstacle together, this may very well serve as the super glue necessary to bond you together through difficult times. OK, which which what the scriptures talk about, you know, how brothers, you know, all together is going to go through adversity. All right. The scriptures talk about how a brother is born for adversity. So if you're going through something, OK, your brother's supposed to help you out, man. Your brother, you were supposed to have a brother there. To help you out, man. All right, to get through that tribulation, to get through that conflict, that obstacle. All right, and 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 essentially, that's what our women is supposed to be for as well, man. Your woman, she's supposed to hold you down. Okay, as well. All right, but not every brother in this truth is gonna have a woman, or what have you. Okay, but this is why we need to rely on each other, man. Because you see the women in this world, they're exceedingly fickle, man. OK. Well, what, you know, the tribulation that, that you, you go through with with, with a, uh, you know, a fellow soldier of your how about shim how shy that's supposed to build the bond. That's supposed to build the bond up, man. All right. A brother is born for adversity. It says. When it is you and me against the world, this can be an exciting ride as together you have created a cause for which to fight and limerence generates a sense of heroism in a new shared identity for the couple. Okay. That's why the scriptures say what well, two is better than one for both of them have a reward. All right. Now the threat is gone. And now this, this segment right here caught me because this is, um, more so common among women, you know, where, where the relationship is not quote unquote fun anymore. All right. Because, you know, one, one thing to keep in mind, we're in hell. All right. We're in captivity. All right. And because the women of the, our women in this life are so tied to, you know, the elements of this life, like the, the, the bars and the, you know, the real hype and rave scenes and, you know, all of this extravagance being flown out because they're tied, you know, to the pleasures of this world and things of that nature. It's, it's, it's hard to keep them around because they always going to be wanting to look for that next thrill. OK, if you don't know anything about women, you got to understand that they are a lot more emotional than men. This is why we call them the weaker vessels. They are the weaker vessels. OK, because what they listen, they listen, you know, today to their emotions more than they listen to logic. All right. And I'm not saying this to, you know, come down on women or bash women. All right. Brothers ain't no misogynist. All right. But this is just the truth. Shit. Women today will tell you. Yeah. Women are very emotional. OK. Um, it says the thrill is gone. It says, unfortunately, once the obstacles are vanquished, the thrill of the relationship may also evaporate. It takes a lot of energy to keep passion burning at its hottest. OK, and, and one thing to keep in mind, you know, just on the carnal relationship level, you know, you, you a brother with a woman and things of that nature. Look, sometimes time, sometimes times gets hard. All right. Sometimes you may have to work more than you want to. All right. Sometimes that 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 thrill, quote unquote, thrill is going to go away. All right. So, uh, you know, that that spark ain't going to be lit all the damn time. All right. It says it takes a lot of energy to keep passion burning at its hottest. You may experience a sense of anticlimax or emptiness as you realize that it was the struggle that made the relationship engaging. It can be like a magic trick. Once you know how it works, it loses its power to intrigue you. 
when you look across at your partner and realize that the thrill is gone, you need to make a decision. OK, and what and what do you know, the majority of, of the women in the society today, when the quote unquote thrill is gone, they up and leave and they look for a new thrill. OK, they, they look for a new uh, roller coaster to ride on. OK. They look they look for somebody else to and this and this is what and this is why we need the kingdom. OK, because a woman, a woman should not be allowed to just up and leave a relationship. All right. It don't work like that, man. Obligate. Even in the truth, we have we have, you know, what I'm saying our our real low days, man. All right. Days where we just not on this fire. And you know what I'm saying? Like not every day is going to be. Uh, 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 we on our best game or we having, you know, the, you know, highly super duper spiritual moments. That's not every day, man. OK, but this is why, once again, obligation in any relationship is important. I scratch your back. You scratch mine. OK, and, that, and that's how the, that's how the most high and the son operate. OK, do what you're supposed to do and I will reward you regardless, man. OK, but. I didn't want to make this too long. I um probably said a little bit more than I probably did a little bit more than I wanted to, but it's all through the spirit. It don't matter. It's all through the spirit. All right. But Lord's willingness is edifying. And um just keep this in mind. Love is tied to obligation and commitment. All right. That's it. Love is a very important virtue of the spirit. With that being said, Shalom.